In the following video, we're going to be taking a look at the equity markets, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. And we'll also take a look at the dollar and the 10-year. We'll look at gold, we'll look at Bitcoin. Got a couple of thoughts I want to share with you guys. Uh, so uh, this is Justin, the Millennial Investor. And let's just go ahead and jump right into the charts. So here we're looking at the DXY. We're on a one day chart. Now you might remember we go back, uh, when we go back to the crisis, uh, in early March, we had the crash, the high rise, the dollar milkshake, uh, and then we began this long term downtrend. Uh, the dollar has been up since the start of the year. Um, and that's kind of been the story of the first two months of the year um, and into March. Um, along with that, if we take a quick look at the 10-year treasury, uh, you can see that it's been, uh, after bottoming out back in March, um, a little spike, but throughout March and April and May, kind of made a bottom, and then it's been a slow rise ever since then, but uh, especially since the beginning of the new year, 2021, we've seen uh, a very, very quick climb, and that has been having a negative impact on the equity markets. Um, and actually, if we if we pull back, I'm going to go to the three day chart for a second. And if we pull back, you'll see I kind of have uh, I've got a number of different trend lines you'll see in blue um, that are marking this uh, this gradual decline in yields that goes back a couple of decades. Um, and we're actually approaching a pretty significant bit of resistance on a descending trend line you see in the blue and also just going back to even to 2012 the end of 2011 um, the red line that you see right here in the middle of my screen um, that is a pretty significant line of support or it was a pretty significant line of support until we broke it um, here in well kind of in 2019 uh, during the repo craze um, and then also uh, in the March crash, uh, it has come down below that level, um, and uh, it had been pretty strong support. Now, as we come up, this is a pretty important moment uh, that we're coming to um, on the 10-year um, as we approach uh, that red line up there, and it happens to coincide with our descending trend line here. It's a lot of resistance. It's going to have to break through, so over the next few days, we will see uh, what happens with that and there could be all sorts of things that affect where the tenure goes um, if the fed continues its its current policy uh, which seems to be to deny that that the tenure rising is a problem um, we could see it continue to rise uh, or otherwise it may you know hit that resistance and then get pushed back down um, what will be really telling is if it does make a break above that trend line, let me turn off the auto here so I can scroll this up. Um, but if it does climb above both of these trend lines, you can see uh, right here it's coming up. If it climbs above, then you're going to look for a retest and then a resumption off. Um, and if it does that, then we could be looking at a really big rise in the 10 year. Um, until the Fed decides to act. And it, I think that if this happens, if we get this retest up, I think they're going to have to act um, because the markets won't like the high yields. It's been decades since we've had, uh, since we've seen a period of time in the economy where there have been rising yields over time. I mean, for, for a couple decades, yields have been slowly falling and the market has really liked that, um, especially in the last 10 years since the great financial crisis. So, uh, this is a pretty big deal. So we could either do that or we could come up and get rejected. Um, we could bounce around in this range a little bit, uh, or we could just simply break down and then begin going back down. Um, it looks like because we're at multi-year lows, um, it looks like to me we're, that the scenario I'm, I'm playing out is that we stay either in this range or we do get a breakout. And if we get that breakout, then I think the Fed will be forced to act and they'll suppress yields. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm thinking of that now. Uh, if we just take a quick look at 
the S&P 500. Um, there's a couple things I want to look at here. Um, let me go back to my auto here. Uh, I've got a trend line here. I'm going to try to darken it up for you so you guys can see it more easily. Um, it's a prime trend line that goes all the way back. Um, has been, you can see it's been resistance, resistance, resistance right before the crash. If I even go back further to a three day chart, uh, what you'll notice that uh, if you look down here, you'll see right here that it was right around the bottom of the great financial crisis in March, 2009. Um, and it was support, it became really important support into 2011. 2011, we dropped down below and we've never really come back above. Um, and so it's actually a really big deal, I think, that we have broken out above, uh, I think, what, when we, we first, we had a breakout of it in August, fell back down, had another breakout and fall back down in November. And since the end of November, we've been above. We've retested it a couple of times. Um, if we drop down to maybe an eight hour time frame, um, you know, then we get a little bit of a different picture. Uh, so obviously holistically, the markets look like they're in a place where they're gonna keep going up. Um, and uh, until we get like a solid retest and fall below um, of that long-term trend line, um, I think it's gonna be long-term uh, really strong support. Um, and it's now broken through. And I think that's gonna be really important now. And then on top of that, you've got a couple of these other lines to be concerned about. Um, if we look a little bit cl more closely here, I've got this trend line. Uh, if, if you follow my crosshairs, uh, it's been support. It bounced off that. Um, it bounced off that here uh, just a few days ago, actually just yesterday. Um, so that is uh, important to notice. Um, it's kind of an interesting picture short in the short term to medium term because I have a trend line here that I've drawn in since the low in March last year in 2020. Uh, we bounced off of it in October. That's where the second touch is. We got another touch here um, in early February, uh, another touch late February. It broke through last week uh, or earlier this week, I should say, um, and it's dropped down below and it's coming up for that retest. Um, and at the end of the day on Friday, it came up above and closed above. And so that's a good sign. Um, even, even if you, you know, with rising yields, this correction from the top uh, is only about, it's not even six full, 6%, it's about 6%. Um, so, you know, a normal correction in a given year would be about 10%. So I don't think there's really anything to worry about in that sense. Um, I think the NASDAQ, if we switch over there, the, the picture looks a lot, uh, or looks a little bit differently. Oops. Um, go back to the NASDAQ here. Uh, the picture looks a little differently because um, you have, um, you've kind of had these, these ascending trend lines that you could place in ever since um, the low in March. The NASDAQ has been kind of on this slow push up. The blue line here is the, was the prime trend line we dropped below. Uh, in September, went back above in October and have dropped down below. Uh, and we've been tracking uh, one trend line lower for a long time, uh, except for over the last few days, as we zoom in on the eight hour. Um, and you see here that uh, in the last, well, I wanna say a couple of weeks, we have, oops, we have made a decline of about 12%. So that's correction territory. Um, not anything abnormal. Um, we've bounced off the bottom uh, of this trend line, which actually is cloned from uh, the March low, which was also touched back in October uh, and then touched again here in January, at the end of January. Um, it's even below another cloned trend line that we bounced off of. Uh, the NASDAQ's in an interesting place. Um, if you look at our green line uh, of support right here, um, it's the top in September. Uh, we got close to that in early November. It became support after we had a failed breakdown in December. Um, and it's been support ever since. We broke under it and came back up. Uh, so on the NASDAQ, see, we've got, we, we, I think what's been happening is we've been seeing a rollover 
uh, from the growth stocks into value stocks, especially industrials and in energy. And I think, I suspect that that will, uh, oops, I suspect that that will continue and uh, into this year. Um, the growth side of the market is very inflated, high PE ratios. Um, not that those things are the only thing that matters, but price is telling us that we're seeing the rotation because the NASDAQ has been getting pounded, um, whereas the both the Dow and the S&P have, have not really seen the same kind of pain uh, as of late. In fact, I think the, um, the only reason the S&P has dropped quite a bit is because of the heavy weighting of uh, the FANG names. Um, so as we look at this, uh, what we'll all be looking for is to see if this, um, if this move up uh, into this resistance, um, which, you know, it's, it's decent resistance as of uh, in recent months or in recent uh, weeks. Uh, but what I'll be looking to see is if we can get back above this, retest it and stay above and then maybe fall back into our into this trend line. Um, it's entirely possible, too, that if the Fed were to act uh, sooner, then we might see because QE and the fiscal spending and, and monetary policy makes assets inflate, we might see a return up, get a couple of retests on these trend lines, and then go back to getting towards all-time highs in the next month or two. Uh, it's really hard to see uh, ahead of time. It'll have to depend definitely with the NASDAQ. It'll depend on what goes what goes down with the 10 year um, take a quick look at the Dow and you see here um, like again a little bit of a different story we, we don't have a lot of that same technical damage uh, that has been done lately um, on the Nasdaq and even on the S&P um, our drop here is less than 5% um, to the low and we're already bouncing right back up um, and so what are, we're currently from the all-time high we closed Friday less than 2% down from the all-time high um, so that just kind of shows you the uh, the rotation out from the growth names into uh, the value names um, particularly um, with the Dow made up of a lot of industrials and, and things like that um, you definitely see uh, that being reflected with the industrials energy and things like that uh, so I wanted to take a look at gold before heading over to Bitcoin. And one thing that I have been tracking uh, for a long time, I think a lot of us have been tracking, you know, since this move, let me just go back to a daily chart. Um, we've been, I've redrawn these trend lines a number of times. It looks a little bit like a mess right now, but uh, going back to, uh, you know, oh, this is the gold to silver ratio. I apologize. Um, yeah, so going back to, uh, you know, August where we made highs over 2000. Um, what we've been seeing is a slow decline. Um, we've had uh, this big channel. I've redrawn these trend lines a couple of times right here. You know, you can see the touches. It's generally close um, depending on if you're going from wicks or if you're going from closes. Um, but it fits. I mean, the, the markets are very, very uh, symmetrical and so you're seeing what's been happening. We've been seeing a, a real decline. Um, you're seeing we're nearing the bottom of this channel, this descending channel that we've been looking at. Now, a lot of people are confused about this because they don't think that, they don't understand how with the, uh, with the fundamental backdrop of the economy, with QE and inflation and things like that, um, they don't, uh, they don't, people don't understand how gold could be pressed down. Obviously, the 10-year being up uh, yields being up, real yields increasing does have an impact on gold. Um, but I, I think we're looking at, at something different here. Um, and because I think it's true that the fundamental backdrop says that gold should be increasing. Uh, we know gold is manipulated. The prices are suppressed. People short gold and things like that. Um, I think we're nearing a point where you're going to see probably the once in a generation opportunity to buy gold. Um, and the reason why is something I've been uh, taking into consideration is so um, going back to uh, the March low uh, when there was the, the big sell off, um, we've been in kind of a slow climb. Um, but even, um, sorry, here's in 2020 we had the sell off. But even going back into 2018, we've been seeing a slow climb. 
uh, in gold. And so when you look at it from the zoomed out perspective on a three day chart, um, it's clearly an uptrend. Clearly everything is going up, right? Um, and we've got what seems to be a massive bull flag. Now gold, as, as I've seen, as I've learned more, as I've looked into how gold has moved in price over time, gold is a very uh, long suffering mover, let's put it that way. Um, gold uh, takes a long time to, to develop. Uh, gold takes a long time for its moves to, to take place. So I think that what we saw here, you know, uh, it, from April to August is not normal um, when it comes to gold, um, or at least it hasn't been normally. And then obviously, you know, the liquidity crisis back in March, everybody sold everything. That explains the move there. But I think the picture makes more sense from a technical perspective if you go out even wider to a weekly chart. And I can't remember what clued me into this, uh, but if you go to a weekly chart, I mean, look at what look at what that looks like. I mean, that looks to me like a very long, uh, long-term cup and handle formation that is starting to develop its handle. Um, and what's really interesting to note is I don't have the chart ready. I don't have the label ready here, but um, if you were to use a 50 moving average on the weekly chart, uh, an exponential moving average, then what you will notice is that the it kind of comes like this. And what's really interesting is on a cup and handle, uh, usually the 50 week exponential moving average uh, touches um, the bottom, like the handle goes down to that and then shoots off. So uh, what I've been formulating for some time now is this belief that, uh, you know, so here we have the breakout from the multi-year uh, descent uh, in the 2010s. Um, I think that what's going to happen is I've got this green box here. This is my buy zone. Um, this is where I think we're at least going to hit the top of it. You can already see we're really close to the top of this box um, at this support level. I've actually got a couple of support levels here um, going you know, across here. That's my lowest support level. I think that's the lowest it'll dip. Um, you've got another trend line right around here. Um, and then you've got the one that's in green. And so to zoom back in, uh, this, this buy zone, this green buy zone is right here and we're almost touching the top. And I think what's going to happen is we're going to continue to see gold bounce down into this buy zone. Um, and then what's going to happen is at some point over the next, I, I wanna say three to nine months, that's a, it's a pretty long range, but gold's a slow mover. We're going to reach the capitulation period on gold. And what's going to happen is, is everyone is going to uh, go into gold at this point and that's going to shoot off uh, up to the upside and that's good news uh, for you gold bugs out there for anybody who wants to buy gold and so here's what's interesting too in a cup and handle uh, pattern wherever the uh, bottom of the cup is to where the bottom of the handle is, uh, forms so even uh, is is kind of your indicator for where price will go um, so from the bottom to the top of my buy zone is about a 60% upward move. Um, and so if you, you know, if you take that, uh, excuse me, if you, if you take that move and you go from the top of the buy zone, then what you're looking at is gold ending up at least at 2,300. And my guess is given the fundamental backdrop, it's going to go a lot higher. Um, and so what's going to be really interesting to see is what when that timing takes place. Now, I could be wrong, um, but that's what price is telling me right now. Um, and I think what will what is also maybe having an effect on gold is Bitcoin. And so as Bitcoin is trading on uh, here on Saturday, uh, Bitcoin's trading up. We're at plus 300 um, for today um, with about 30 minutes until the next daily candle comes along. Let's just go to that daily candle um, so that we can simplify this a little bit. Um, I think that gold uh, is going to stay suppressed for some time. 
which is actually really great if you are in Bitcoin because uh, you're not missing out on, on the gold trade right now. I think that what's going to happen is conveniently, Bitcoin is going to make its the rest of its run at least up until you know July. I think the earliest, the way that I've calculated Bitcoin out, my earliest peak, uh, my earliest opportunity for a peak uh, would be right here in, uh, in July, at the end of July. At the earliest, I don't think it's going to be there, but I just want to be ready for that possibility. More likely mid-September, uh, also possible that it could come as late as mid-November. That's where I'm seeing the top based on previous cycles um, and some of the math that I've done and some of the, some of the research I've done. Um, I know that there are a lot of channels that have uh, really uh, done a lot of homework and research. So shout out to Jordan uh, Jordan Lindsay at Conquer Trading and Investing um, in the Conquering the Markets group. They've done a lot of work, so uh, and I've learned a lot from their work, so credit where credit's due there. Um, but I think what's going to be great is you're going to see a perfect opportunity if you're in Bitcoin uh, to get out of Bitcoin as Bitcoin is reaching its high somewhere in this range and to go into gold before gold makes its huge upward move. Um, and I think that if you're smart, um, I think it would be good to at least allocate some of your assets, some of your gain from Bitcoin uh, or from wherever you're gaining from uh, into gold as you transition out. Um, so uh, in looking at Bitcoin here, uh, we've got this descending um, trend line that has that I put in as soon as we hit this top. Uh, let me go to the eight hour here. It's a little bit cleaner here. Um, as soon as we hit this bounce up on March 3rd earlier this week, um, I placed this trend line. Um, and I've got a couple of different trend lines. Ignore the blue box. Um, that's for some other research I've done with Bitcoin. Um, and uh, so... I think uh, we've got an engulfing candle here. It looks like an engulfing green candle here um, and on the eight hour at least. Um, so that's a good sign. Um, it actually appears, I was kind of looking if I you know, take my auto off here. I've got this green buy zone down here. This would be if Bitcoin was about to consolidate into a 30 or 40% pullback, which is pretty normal in a Bitcoin cycle. Um, but nonetheless, um, I, I had this there so that if it did come down there, that would be the spot to accumulate more um, before its next move up, which could be anywhere from 80% higher to 150 to 200% higher um, on its next move. So uh, things could move pretty quickly. But uh, if, this, uh, if this does not consolidate down, if it breaks through this trend line, uh, let me get this drawing tool out. If it breaks through the trend line here, um, and then is able to retest off that and move up, uh, and maybe in the process, uh, it could, you know, coming over this uh, nearby near-term uh, horizontal resistance, it might retest that and then shoot back up. Uh, in which case, we'll be uh, seeing the overhead resistance here. Um, we might have to, you know, retest off that. Uh, that would probably be healthy um, for it to do those retests rather than just simply to shoot through without a retest. That would be a little bit worrisome, I suppose. Um, uh, and start going back into price discovery. Um, I think that uh, looks more and more likely as the days go by, um, but you always got to be ready for the downside. Always got to be ready for Bitcoin to do its 30 to 40% pullback. There were you know, at least half a dozen of those in the previous cycle. Um, so that's what we wanted to look at today. Um, I appreciate you watching this video. Um, if this was interesting to you, if you learned something from this, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Um, and hopefully this will, uh, this can be something that is beneficial to not just me as I learn, um, but also to anybody else watching. Thanks for watching.